everybody, AJ Rizek here, and today we are going to look at Clause Mail email client. Version 3.10 just came out a few days ago, so we're going to play around with that and uh, let's see what everybody thinks. Um, those of you that know me, you know that I am a big fan of Geary, the lightweight email client from Yorba. Well, Clause Mail is another lightweight client, it has been around for a long time. Um, Wow, I think uh, 2005, 2006, um, if I remember correctly. And uh, Clause Mail is actually derived from Syflead, which is even older, I think 2000, 2001, somewhere around in that area. Um, but like I said, very lightweight client. Um, looks like they've added some new features, easier to set up. Um, but uh, let's... Uh, Let's go and uh, uh, let's not just talk about it. Let's go and take a look at, uh, at Clause Mail. All right, we are on the web update website, and that's where I first read about uh, Clause Mail 3.10 being released. And if you've never been to web update, definitely worth taking a look at. Um, not only this website, uh, also Noobs Lab. Um, I use the two of those to kind of stay updated on what's going on in the world of Ubuntu. And then also, besides the little news articles, they both have some PPAs for installing all different applications and um, themes, icons, that sort of thing. And, and both websites are very good about keeping their PPAs up to date. So um, good place to, to uh, download some themes and keep, uh, keep updated on those themes, icons, that sort of thing. Um, and then you know myself they both have uh, RSS feeds so I've added both of those RSS to my Feedly account just so that whenever a new article comes out I get it I get uh, notified of it um, helps me stay up to date on all this kind of stuff um, but anyway um, if you go through this article on Claws Mail they give you some instructions on um, they talk a little bit about the about what's new in clause mail that sort of thing um, but also if you get down here it tells you how to do the installation uh, via the terminal just you know you can copy and paste right into the terminal get it installed that way same thing for installing the clause mail themes um, now I added this uh, PPA to my list of repositories but I'm gonna do an installation via synaptic um, I've always been a fan of Synaptic Package Manager. And the reason I'm going this route is I know there's a whole bunch of, you know, the plugins and all that kind of stuff. Um, stuff that's not necessarily necessary to run. Uh, clause mail, but they're nice added features, so I want to make sure that I get everything. Um, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. And it looks like. Yeah, it looks like there's. Well, there is a lot there, but uh, let's find everything for 310. Looks like just about everything here. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to mark it all for installation. And install that. And I'm going to pause this video while the installation is going on, then we'll come back and take a look at Claws Mail. Okay, we're back and uh, let's pull up Claws Mail and see what we got here. Our, uh, oh, popped up on my other screen. Here we go. Okay, Claws Mail Setup Wizard. Let's see if this whole auto configuration thing works. All right, right off the bat, I see that. Yeah, uh, I have no such email as what is being thrown into there. Let's put in my real email address. 
where it came up with that, I have absolutely no idea. Okay, forward. And this is an IMAP. see if it auto auto configure already I'm seeing that you know they they touted that there's an auto configuration to it. This sure doesn't look too automatic to me. All right. Do you want to accept it? Accept and save. All right. Let's see if that it can pull if it can pull down my email. Now, I'll I'll admit it's probably going to take you a little while for the for the first uh, upload of all this because I got a lot of emails on that account. So I tell you what, let me pause this real quick and let it do its thing because I I wouldn't expect it to uh, to download everything real quick with the amount that I've got. Oh, there it goes. Hey, let's not uh, let's not pause the uh, the video. Okay, so it looks like it's pulling stuff down. All right. Um, Hey, that looks pretty good. Okay, um, I guess the way to put this, is it, it's not quite as automatic as I'd like to see. You know, with um, Geary and Evolution, basically if you've got a, like a Gmail or Yahoo account, you can put in your email address and your password, and boom, it does everything else. Um, it's not quite as automatic here, but I'll tell you what, that's it's far better than the older versions of Clause Mail. Because, uh, and if you've never used Clause Mail, you know, uh, last time I used Clause Mail, you had to, <clears throat> excuse me, you had to supply every tiny little detail for your account. You know, you needed. Uh, what port you needed, you know, all of the all the security stuff, you know, all that stuff. It couldn't figure out Jack on its own. So, I mean, we have made some strides here. Um, it's not quite where, you know, like I said, Evolution and Geary, boom, it's, you know, right off the bat, it pulls down everything for you. It's not quite there, but uh, uh, that's not bad. All right, well, now that we've got this thing up and running, let's take a look at some features here. Um, and first thing I want to talk about is uh, the layout. This is, you know, obviously the, the default layout. And personally, that's the first thing I'm changing because to me, this sort of layout, it just does not work. I mean, it. I guess it was good back in the day of the 4.3, uh, uh, format uh, monitors but with widescreen monitors to me a a triple column view is the most efficient use of, of the uh, screen real estate um, so let's go up to view and we do have a full screen mode while we're looking at it which pops it up full screen it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference just kind of covers over the uh, uh, the the top bar on my screen let's go out of that <clears throat> and so we got a standard layout three column wide message wide message list and small screen three column 
that's the kind of, of uh, layout I like. And uh, usually I play around with our column width um, to see what works out well for you. Uh, it needs a little bit of more tweaking, but it kind of gets the point across. That's basically how I I set all of my email clients up. And I, uh, I want it fairly wide over here in this viewing area. And then in these two columns, I try to keep them as narrow as I can while still getting the information that I need. Um, you know, like this uh, size. Actually, that's not even something I really care about. So we'll have to we'll have to play around with that. To see if we can get rid of some of those columns there because I don't care about the size. The date now that's a different story. I'd like to know when I received uh, when I received the email. But anyway, so that's a that's the three column view. That's that's uh, how I typically like to see my my emails laid out. The wide message was that sort of view so your message is why now I could see if you've got um, you know an older 4-3 ratio screen maybe an older laptop I can see where this sort of view would work out well for you um, but like I said when you've got a widescreen monitor you know especially a, a, a one like this where it's set up as 1080p and you know hey, it's just not a good use of, of screen real estate You've got all this white space here white space over here there's just better uses of your screen real estate but I figured I'd show you show everybody the um, the different uh, layouts here there's that layout there which was called what was that called wide message list and then small screen which is well wow, like that okay um, I think even on a small screen I wouldn't like that Oh, okay, you do, you click on a on a message, and rather than it, it totally re gets rid of the preview, just click on the message, and the message pops up in a new window. Okay, I I can see how that would make sense on a small screen, um, but I'm going back to three column, and I'm seeing right now that um, doesn't always pop back the way it should. Ah, oh, there we go. So that is definitely something that I do not like. I mean, uh, you know, I like having the various um, screen modes there, but when you when you switch back, I would I would like it to when you revert back to the different screen mode, it should go back the way that you had it set it previously. Now, granted, um, you're probably going to pick a screen mode that works out well for you, and then you're not going to touch that ever again. So. Yeah, maybe that's not such a big deal, but uh, that is a little bit irritating. Um, okay, so we looked at the different views, the layout, that sort of thing. Um, they do have a threaded view um, or just sorted by date. I do like threaded view. Um, that's one of those the you know personal preference kind of things. Um, a lot of people don't like it. They just want to see a list of all their emails by date or or whatever. I like the threaded view so that you know if there's 15, 20 back and forth emails, I can see them all threaded together and uh, and kind of sort through them that sort of thing. Um, but like the previous versions of uh, of Claws Mail and also Thunderbird, we've got Buku options here, all kinds of different options for how we want to view our emails. So you know definitely no problems there nothing that's been lost or anything um, that's all good let's kinda scroll over now then and we'll take a look at some of the preferences and how we can set those up alright so right here we've got preferences for current accounts so you can set you know one you got your basics right here for that particular account uh, but then you can set all kinds of variables that are specific for this particular account. Um, and here's all, if you remember, I was saying you had to put all this 
ports and domain name and all that kind of stuff in by hand with the old versions of um, of clause they've taken care of that so that you don't have to do that anymore which is nice um, you don't have to go and dig up all the uh, you know all of your specs and all that kind of stuff um, SSL and looking at and um, you know I'm gonna, gonna go over all the details of uh, SSL and privacy um, I mean, obviously, you got stuff like always sign messages, always encrypt, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, but going through all the specifics of SSL and certificates and all that kind of stuff is beyond the scope of this uh, uh, this video. So I'm just going to say the options are there, and this has always been a strong point of clause is that good security. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, if there's interest, I, I might do a uh, a uh, SSL, you know, privacy that kind of sort of thing uh, video in the future. If uh, you know, if anybody wants to see it, uh, various templates. You're composing, you know. So if you automatically say you always on this particular email account, you always blind copy somebody, or you're always um, copy somebody always do a reply you can do some defaults there um, so that you're not always plugging that in every time sending receiving basic stuff all the stuff that you know you may want to tweak for that particular account I have to come up back up to configurations and adding another account um, as in the past you know the Clause has no problem dealing with multiple accounts. Uh, edit the account. Okay, that's kind of self-explanatory. Preferences, and obviously these are going to be system-wide. Um, you know how we send and receive the emails, um, composition. You know more these are general templates uh, wrapping spell checking all this kind of stuff um, text options and here's kind of at least this to me it's an important one how the program deals with HTML um, the default is render HTML messages as text um, typically I'll go with something like this the render HTML only messages with plugin if available I, you know, if something is a uh, HTML message, I want to see the HTML. Uh, that's just me. Um, Security-wise, rendering it all as text is probably the most secure. Um, but you know, if it's, you know, if I'm downloading a HTML message, assuming that it's from some somebody that I recognize or some source that I recognize yeah um, I'll, I'll take the risk um, as you can see more options there image viewers how to how it displays images display them in line print images automatically display attached images uh, external um, programs down here on display, now you can see we can pick some custom color labels, that sort of thing. Um, different message view, signatures, that kind of thing. Um, here you can change your fonts, which is something that um, that's something that I always change myself. The uh, you know the sans and monospace fonts that you know not the most exciting to look at I usually personalize that a little bit and then here is uh, the various icon themes that you can pick and uh, cool thing here is that you get a preview of all these different uh, all these different themes so you know pick whatever you like and uh, then apply the theme Click OK and boom, you got it. And I think it doesn't look like these change. You might have to go and restart the program to uh, to get them to apply. Let's see if that's what's going to happen here. Hmm. 
Hmm, looks the same to me. No, I guess it did. Yeah, it is. It is the correct uh, theme. Sepolution. Let's see what else we got here. We got this black theme. Yeah, it doesn't look like those are changing like they're supposed to. Ah, that's what you got to do. Okay, it was Alex being a moron. After you go and pick the theme, you go in the, you got the preview there. Then you need to go and click on the use this button. So, um, okay, I don't like that gorilla thing. That's ugly. But, or just black theme. Okay, click use this. Boom, you can see how it changes. That's that's more, more my liking. Okay, so anyway, um, now you've learned with me. Uh, that's how you change the themes there. Toolbars. Okay. Okay. Now here's where you get to. You could tweak what's on the toolbar, what's not on the toolbar, and um, you, it looks like you can change the order on. Yeah, you can change the order on the stuff too. Very nice. Same thing on the message one and compose one. Oh, that I like that. Um, that's been my complaint on some uh, on some other programs where you got you got this toolbar that got buku icons on it and you really can't do much to tweak it. But I like that uh, you know you can do all that tweaking yourself there. Very nice. Um, other stuff address add address to destination double click confirm on exit empty so very nice stuff okay well that kind of looks at a lot of those options stuff that you can tweak yourself one of the features that uh, was kind of promoted in the web update article um, uh, is about a lib avatar plugin which displays user avatars from libavatar.org okay let me go to that site here now I'm gonna be perfectly honest until I read that article I had never heard of lib avatar maybe some of you out there have I have not um, long story short this is sort of um, if you're familiar with gravitars this is like um, this is like an open source Gravatar service. Libtar is a service which displays your avatar to other websites. If you create an account with us, your photo could start popping up next to forum, post, blog comments, or any site where you left your email. Read more. Okay, and it goes through all the details of setting up account and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's cool and all that. Um, but like I said, I've never heard of the of the service until um, until I read this article. Maybe a bunch of you have, and I just been in the dark, um, you know, which is entirely possible. Um, so, you know, this is a neat a neat uh, option here. The fact that you can display those uh, those avatars. Um, and I'm not going to knock that one. Or, or that that addition um, but I mean and and you know y'all can leave me a comment tell me what you think on this but uh, I think a more useful plugin than this one would have been a plugin that would dis display say your G plus picture or your Gmail picture um, your Facebook picture um, you know the avatars from all those um, Yahoo pictures you know all that kind of stuff to me that would be more useful I mean granted I mean yeah that's not going to well, probably not going to be open source I don't know uh, whether you, whether you could pull it off open source or not 
but in either case to me that would be more useful than than this and and like I said it's just a simple fact that if the, if most other people are like me and have never heard this service um, okay you added this plug in to display this picture but um, so what uh, and, and this is not to knock having the avatars. I like having the avatar at the top of an email. Um, that's one of the things that I really like about Geary. Um, you know, you got that little Gmail avatar that pops up at the top or Yahoo, whatever. Um, and, you know, because I'm a very, you know, visual image based person, I, I that's just the way my, my, my brain rolls. A lot of people it doesn't do anything for them and you know hey that's cool too um but uh to me like i said if there's if most other people haven't heard of this service just like me uh, it it kind of ends up being okay you've got this neat tool that you can't use um, so uh yeah, I'm not going to ramble on about that one anymore, but uh, I think you kind of get my point on that. But like I said, leave me a comment if you've heard of this service before. Like I said, I have never heard of this before. Um, it, you know, maybe I've just been in the dark on this one. Um, anyway, it looks like from what I've been reading on this, and uh, you know I haven't had a lot of time to play around with the clause mail um, uh, like I said I've used it in the past and it's it it is lightning fast um, as far as going out fetching the email that sort of thing and having plenty of options it's a good uh, email uh, or email client um, where in the past I wasn't always happy with it was just the looks and the layout it always seemed like we were dwelling uh, in, back in the 90s but uh, you know taking a look at this uh, that's nice looking the the different icon themes definitely helps out because uh, you know you can tweak it to, to look the way you want or you know match up with that theme that you've got running on your desktop that sort of thing and uh, this theme that I got going on right here, I, I kind of like that. Uh, um, it's pretty nice looking. But, uh, and I think we've covered uh, a lot of the stuff here. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll throw a link up to this web update uh, page, and you can read read through a lot of this. Um, but uh, like I said, I think we've covered pretty much. Uh, everything that uh, that I want to talk about on this program. Well, that finishes things up here. Let me close that up. I uh, want to say thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Uh, as usual, give it a big old thumbs up uh, if you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. Um, I'll throw links to uh, the web update page and the clause mail home page all that kind of stuff I'll leave that down in the description so that you can go and find that and uh, give it a try if you'd like uh, as usual if you want to keep getting this great content uh, be sure to subscribe to the videos also uh, for my regular subscribers uh, don't know if you noticed got the new intro also a new ending to my videos um, big old thumbs up to the people at uh, Partners in Crime, they uh, they supplied me with the uh, templates for uh, Blender. I don't know if you're familiar with Blender. It's an animation program, op um, multiple platforms, all that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll do a video on that one day. But anyway, uh, they supplied me with the templates I use for making the new intro and ending to the video. So big thumbs up to them. I'll throw a link to their YouTube page. Um, down in the notes as well um, just so you know you want to try playing around with that uh, give it a try yourself but, uh, they had a bunch of other templates uh, besides what I used but anyway subscribe if you like this stuff and uh, thanks a lot see you next time